How's it going, everyone? Marilyn here, and I'm back on Hermitcraft Feed the Beast. Oh, yeah. Take a look at what's going on. First of all, um, I did a little bit of expanding to my house here. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, I know. It doesn't look too impressive from the outside now. What on earth? But remember, it was an L shape before. Now it's a square. I also did a little bit of planting some stuff. I got some more trees. Um, really important. I mean, it's been a bit since I've done like these manual tree things, but it's really important if you're trying to get like a nice rubber tree farm going. I was finding that if I had them too close together, they wouldn't grow. This seems like just the right length. Basically, one, two, three, four, five, six blocks in between them. So six blocks of whatever, and then the tree. Kind of follow. That seemed to work just fine. They were growing all happily afterwards, uh, which is great. Now, a few people have been saying that if you leave the, uh, the top two up there, then it will continue to produce this sticky resin. Now, that's obviously the stuff you want, but I was finding that I put normal leaves up there on my single-player world, and it seemed to produce them just fine. So what we're going to do, see this short one over here, we're actually going to just get rid of all of its leaves. Just all of them. And let's just see if it produces anything. And then, maybe later on, we will go ahead and put just some random leaves on top of it. Just to see. I'm really curious. I really am. I have a feeling it's not going to produce anything, but we'll have to see. Uh, got this nice little farm going. It's just a manual farm for right now. I don't really have any of the uh, redstone I'm going to need to make a really cool automatic kind of farm. But I have a feeling that's going to change soon because I want to start doing a little bit of mining. Uh, just go down to the diamond layer and just dig for some diamonds down there. Oh, here's that corn. See, it's all grown now when you break it. You sometimes get some seeds and you get some corn. Now, I don't think you always get seeds. I broke one earlier and I didn't get any. That kind of stinks. I have some pumpkins. <laughs> I don't really like these. They're kind of growing all gnarly. I think I'll set up just something more standard. You can automate those really easily with like a piston or something. Don't even need computers or whatnot, any of the fancy machines. But yeah, so let's take a look at that new room. Oh, I also have a ton of the sugar cane now. I think that'll be helpful. Put some cheap doors there. <laughs> Fence gates they actually work pretty well. Okay, so what is that room? Right now, it's just storing pumpkins. <laughs> I know, but it's actually going to be having something else in it. Now, I wish the design would have been just a little bit different. I'll probably expand things because... What I'm going to make is a 3x3x3 three by three by three structure. So it's going to be a little off. But that's okay, because I can put a tank on the side eventually. And that'll be really handy um, for storing a certain something. But what on earth am I making? Well, that's a very good question. I'm making something that will make this coal far more efficient than it is currently. It's going to be a... Uh, big structure, but you're going to need some sand and some bricks. About a hundred of each. I have way too much anyway. Now, if I'm not mistaken, well, let's actually just look it up. We're looking for a Coke oven brick. All right, and this is how you make it. There's actually two different recipes, but I think it ends up to be the same either way. The sandy brick is just four of those, so really just need a Five sand and four brick with the sand in the middle in sort of an X pattern. And then, yeah, yeah, you know how that goes. Now, there's another thing, too. I think if you hold shift while doing that, oh, that is pretty sweet. wasn't working quite as well with uh, my project tables in my single player world. But if you're just crafting it on a normal one, it seems to work. And maybe it does, and I just wasn't doing it right. But we're going to need, uh, what is it? I think 26. It has to be hollow. So you're going to need 9 on the bottom layer. Well, let's just get, I'm pretty sure it's 26. Let's see if that's enough. Might be too much. <laughs> oh, well. 
we're going to put it right in here. I think I'm actually going to put it on this side just so I can have the tank and everything here. So to make this, you're going to need to make a wall like that. You need the floor. So basically this one right here, the one in the middle, that needs to be hollow. Okay, nothing can be in there. And then, yep, it was 26. Once it's all done, if you've done it right, you'll see this cool little window thing. And then you have a Coke oven. Now, this is not something that's just going to get you, um, you know, some kind of soda. No, it is, and it's, trust me, it's not what, the other thing you might be thinking is, it gives you coal Coke. All right, so this coal Coke stuff is super powerful compared to normal coal. Um, I think all you need to do is just put in some coal. I'm actually going to get a stack of coal. The only downside to this is I hear it takes forever to cook all this up. But it's really worth it in the end. So let's just put it in, and it's cooking it all right. Yep. Yeah. Crazy. Cooks it very slowly, though. It takes, I think it's about two or three minutes per coal, and a whole stack of coal, or 64 coal, is going to take you about two and a half hours or so. So that's a lot of time. It's something that you should have on while you're building, or while you're going caving, or mining, or something. But what it makes is this coal coke stuff. Now, let's see. Yeah, there you go. And it also makes some creosote oil, which you can use uh, for a variety of different things. You can use that in railcraft. In fact, they actually changed the recipe for rails now. If you're looking for just, um, oh, what is it even called? There it is. A track. If you remember the old recipe, you might be surprised if you try to make it now. It's not going to work. You instead need these standard rails, which, uh, you make through this plate bending machine or a rolling machine. Your choice. And it works out to be a little bit better, but it's just a lot of um, a lot of steps you kind of got to go through now. But you also need this wooden rail bed. You need four of these wooden ties, and you make those with some slabs and this creosote stuff that you get from the cold coke oven. So that's why uh, that's why you want to have some of it. Let's take a look here. It is still cooking, man. Um, now eventually you're going to want to have something to put all of that in. A tank or something is very useful because you can only store, I think it's about 64 buckets worth of that creosote oil. And you can put it in, um, oh, what is it, bottles too. Usually you get these creosote bottles. And that's another effective way if you got some glass. But if this fills up, you're not going to be able to cook any more coal into coal coke. So putting it in a tank is a good idea. Now I'm not going to be mass producing it right now. I just kind of wanted to get that cooking while I was building my little my little branch mine way down because I want to get some stuff. You know, I've shown you some of the, the basic stuff, but it's about time we make some machines. That's what I'm thinking. And getting coal coke ready is really going to help for that because one other thing I was going to show you. Oh, look, there it is. Okay, so... You can see here it says can produce 4K EU at 10 EU slash T generator. Uh, yeah, there's some foreign language if you're totally new to this. What that means is it'll produce 4,000 of this EU stuff at 10 EU per tick. Whenever you see slash T, that means per tick. And a tick, there are actually 20 ticks per second in Minecraft. It's sort of like every time something's updated, it ticks or something. It's not like a bug. You don't have to worry about that. Um, it's just kind of like a time measurement system. So it makes 10 EU per tick. And this EU stuff is used to power machines. And we're going to be dabbling into that before too long, but we need a good power source. So, oops, why am I typing E? So while coal only makes 4K EU, coal coke makes 16K EU. And it also gives much higher heat input or output for uh, solid 
fueled firebox. That can be used in steam engines. You can also use this stuff in other engines too, I'm pretty sure. And it burns longer than normal coal if you put it in a, a furnace. So it's really great stuff. It doesn't really take anything to make it. It just takes time. And, you know, if you're not really using any of that coal, go ahead and make it into coal coke. It's not too expensive. The only real hassle is just getting all those bricks. And you need, oh, see, there's some of that creosote oil. Oh, and you only get 500 for each. So I guess it can store like 128 coals worth of creosote oil. Cool. Well, we'll deal with that later. I just wanted to get that cooking. Now, there's one other thing I want to, and I know I say this like every episode, but wait, there's one other thing, and then there's like 10. But this one's really cool. This is like such a great thing. So I had to, you know, get a whole bunch of these chests, and it's getting really unorganized, right? I mean, I got stuff all over the place. Got all my iron. I got all this coal. Like, that's a ton of coal. Um, dirt, stone. I mean, you know, some of the stuff I'm getting just so much of that storing it in chests just becomes cumbersome. Now, in an earlier episode, I showed you how you can make, like, a copper chest. And while I could go ahead and upgrade to that, I want to hold on to my copper for right now. Um, where did that thing go? Copper chest. See? Just around a chest with some copper, and you'll make a copper chest, which holds so much more. I could probably show you. Do I have any copper? Oh, I only have seven. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. I could cook one up, but I don't know. I just, I really want to start making this into dust so we get a much better output. That's really important. Well, before too long. But anyway, this is a really nice option if uh, you're looking to store just a bunch of stuff of a single item. So you're going to need to make some slabs. And thankfully, these are really uh, cheap to make. Just three of the, uh, the planks gives you six of those slabs. Then you're going to need to surround it with seven logs. Okay, it can't be planks. It has to be like the oak wood. It can be any type of wood, except for like um, great wood and stuff, any of the thongcraft woods. But that makes you a barrel. And this is from factorization. Barrels are really cool. Okay, it's... Factorization's a mod, by the way, just in case you didn't know. At least I'm pretty sure that's where it's from. Yeah. So, what do you do with these barrels? Well, let's just set our first one down right there. It's empty. You can right-click it, and it says empty. You can left-click it, and it says empty. Well, that's exciting. No, just wait. Let's find something we have a whole bunch of, like this coal. It's kind of taking up space in our large chest. So... Let's say you have four coal in your inventory, or four stacks of coal, or whatever item. This is great for cobblestone, dirt, gravel, you know, your basic stuff like that. But I have a lot of coal right now. You can right-click it to put it inside of the barrel. And see? It says 64. Nice. Additionally, whoops, you can right-click twice. So do a double right-click, and you'll put all of it that you have in your inventory presently into the barrel. So now, when you right-click it, 256 coal. It says 4 times 64 because it tells you how many stacks you have in there. You can left-click it, and then you'll withdraw a stack of the item. Very cool. Um, just nice, quick way to get some stuff. And you can right-click to put it back in. But let's say you only want to get a single item at a time. Well, just hold in Shift so you're crouching, and then left-click. And then you'll just be able to get one at a time. Additionally, see now there's a plus 54, so there's three stacks of 64 plus 54. You can also just right-click and it tells you the actual amount. Nifty, huh? Yeah, I like that. I think it's a great way to store just a massive quantity of items. It begins to rain as flux disrupts the weather. Oh, curse you, Thomcraft! Why is it doing that? See, like, there's this, this flux stuff, and... That's a really big thing in Thomcraft, but if you're not using it, it can get very annoying. So, ah. Oh, okay, it just stopped. Looks like that uh, server mod thingy it finally worked. <laughs> it hadn't been working earlier in the day when I was doing some of this. Okay, so let's go ahead and make two more barrels since I have this wood. I should probably go chop down another tree or two. All right, and then we can store some more stuff in here. I recommend having some barrels set up for all of your dirt, all of your cobblestone, 
you know, all the items you anticipate getting a lot of. For instance, I'm farming sugarcane like a fiend. Basically a sugar addict at this point. So I definitely want to have somewhere to store all of that. In fact, I want to do this right now simply because I have more of that than I do the other. I don't even have that much cobblestone. Just kind of weird. I have a ton of bricks, too. Huh. Well, we're going to have to do something about that. But you know what? I'm going to get a ton of cobblestone because I'm going... I'm going digging, yep. Oh, one last thing on these barrels, right? So they can store 64 stacks of 64. That basically works out to be 4,096 of whatever single item you put in there. Pretty nice, actually. And there's nothing to stop you from setting an up or setting up another barrel with that same item. There's also a, um, a thing you can do. It is, here it is, there's an upgrade. An extra dimensional storage barrel upgrade. But it's a lot more expensive. It takes this dark iron ingot stuff. And it's a little tricky to make. Plus blaze rods and things like that. But trust me, by the time you get to that point um, where you'd need over 4,000, you'll have all that stuff. Guarantee it. Guarantee it indeed. Anyway, I think I'm ready now to do a little bit of mining. I know, I really want to get that effective system going, want to get down to that diamond layer, but I need to go back to my house to pick up that string I left behind. Yeah, I know. Oh, it looks like it's getting late. Maybe I'll do that in the morning. But anyway, I'm going to go run and get that really quick, pick up any other items I left behind that I want to bring along, and then I'll see about getting back here to start up my new mining system, because I'm getting sick and tired of this low-tech house thing I'm in now. Ooh, look at all that cold coke. I know. I already got 10 and a bunch of creosote oil. Sweet. Alright, uh, what do you mean I can only sleep at night? Come on, it's night! Okay, I'm getting a little, little overexcited here. Um, no big deal. Anyway, I will see you after I've run back and gotten all that stuff. We're going. Don't be a slacker. Come on, we don't leave anyone behind. We're getting closer, guys. Come on. Come on, I'm not going to leave you behind. Not now. We've worked so hard for this. Come on, cows. Come on, little moo moos. We can do this. Well, don't you stop on me now. What's the matter? Oh, none of this rebellious stuff now. Hey. Hey, this is serious. And I didn't even get my string. I mean, how do you guys think I feel right now? I didn't get the string, which is the one thing I went there to get, because I thought it was over there. But no, apparently it's not there. I'm trying to figure out what on earth I did with all that string. Like, I seriously don't even know. You guys are way too slow. We're never going to be able to get there if you keep slowing down. It's you. You're the troublemaker. Hey. 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 Hey, hey, we're going. We've come so far, too far for you to just stay there. Hey, you don't even have anything on you that can rust. So stop your complaining. I'm wearing a suit full of bronze armor. My armor could rust. Not really, but don't tell the cows that. You'll be so much better than these stinking sheep. No, no. No! Get up! Get up! Alright, there we go. <laughs> Don't you just drown now! Don't you just drown now! We have so much we have to do with you. Come on. Alright, so I'm home, and you know what? The whole reason I went over there was to get this string that's actually sitting here. <laughs> oh, man, I thought I left that behind. I didn't see it anywhere, but... Oh, well. Whatever. You know what? I took a bold journey and I brought along two cows, although I don't know where the second one went. And hopefully I can get some cows doing their thing. Got to get some cow farms going on. Oh man, where did that other cow go? Where did it go? <laughs> oh no, I think he was checking out my garden over here. Oh my goodness. I brought two cows. That's so weird. 
Alright, I gotta find that other cow now. This is serious. Oh, man. Oh, where did your friend go? Come on, I'm looking for your buddy. Where's he hiding? Where's he hiding? Oh, man. I let him go. Lose sight of him for one moment. Those cows, they just... They slip away. They are slippery little things. Jeez. I can't believe it. It's gone. I'm going to have to find it again. Oh, man. All right. Well, whatever. I'll get over it. At least I have one cow. So I need to make a fence for him. Look at you, you little punk. Oh, there you are. You were hiding like a ninja cow or something. <laughs> Jeez, don't scare me like that. Alright, you know what? Even though these things are going to moo incessantly, I just need, um... I need to put my stuff away. Let's see. Oh, so you can actually press Y, and that will sort your inventory for you. Additionally, inside of chests, there are these buttons here. Z is the default sort, or whatever this one is. It's not the button Z. This one kind of sorts them into rows. That's kind of neat. This or columns. This one's kind of rows. And then I don't know some different sorting things. This one works for now. Okay, so I'm gonna dump all this stuff off. Picked up some seeds while I was out and about. All right, let's make some. Oh, and I started cooking some stone. Figured mm. I might need that. I really want to make just a basic, basic fence. I'm probably going to need a bit more sticks, aren't I? All right. Come over here. Find your friend. Where'd your friend go? Come on. Where's your buddy? Oh, you know what? I need to make a gate really quick. In fact, I'm going to just take a shortcut. I'm just going to take this one down. <laughs> there we go. All right, I got a gate. Let's go ahead and set this up. So hopefully I can lead him over there, shut the gate, and then kind of sneak out. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. There we go. There we go. Good cow. Hey, get off of my pumpkins, you little punk. What is that all about? You little rebel. Hey, come here. Come here. I got something for you. I got a new little home. When I say little, I mean it. <laughs> all right. In you go. Oh, not you. Sheep, don't you even think it. Don't you even think it. All right, now let's give you some of this wheat, and you can make a little baby cow. Yay, a little baby cow. And I somehow got experience for that. It was quite the experience. Um, okay, so got some cows. Great. And got some seeds. Awesome. And I need to make another fence. Not cool. Not cool at all. There we go. Fence gate. Sweet. Oh, right. Okay, so how on earth do you get the fence up like that? Well, just need to set a block down and then place it. Then you can have it like that. In fact, if you have a pressure plate, it'll open. But you really want the obsidian pressure plates because they only trigger when a, when a player steps on it, which is very nice. Is it getting dark out? Oh, it is! Look at that! Oh, my word. Okay, so you know what? That's just fine by me. Let me grab something to eat. Guess I'll take some of this delicious steak. Oh man, I'm all out of my spawn steak. Oh well. Um, okay, now for the thing that I really wanted to make. I'm going to need one more iron, so let's just go ahead and cook up ten of that iron really quick. I can do that for one piece of coal. Because we're going to make backpack. We're going to make this miner's backpack. Now you're going to need a chest, two iron ingot, four string, and two wool in order to make that. It's just the nicest thing ever. So let's go ahead and grab some of that stuff. We're going to need a chest. So let's go ahead and... Wow. I am surprisingly low on wood. That is insane. I'm going to have to like go chop down a forest or something. Oh wait, here we go. All right, got a chest. Next, let's get some string. Gonna need four string. Cool.
cool. And I got a ton of wool. So let's take two of that wool. And then I just need two pieces of iron, and I am good to go. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's make the chest. Two wool. One, two, three, four string. And then, actually for any of these backpacks, it's this side material. That's the one that you can do something special with. That changes what it is. For instance, I could have like a builder's backpack if I put clay there. The digger's backpack's really nice because that picks up like cobblestone, uh, dirt, gravel, things like that that you get a lot of. The miner's backpack is more for ores and things. Um, so that's kind of, you know, each one has their different uses. Like a forester's one, you could just put some wood logs there and that'll get you a forester's one. Hunter's is very nice. Just put some feathers in there. And is it hunters or is it? I think, yeah, I think it's hunters that picks up like monster drops. So that's pretty nice. But the one that I really like is this Miner's Backpack. Sweet. So I'm going to sleep really quick. I'm the only one on the server right now, and that's fine. That's fine. I'm not really at a point where I can do all that much fun stuff with other people. But pretty soon I'm going to be making, uh, some nice stuff. I have a long way to go, but that's yeah, fine. All right, so let me show you this in action. In fact, I can even just, I think I can just take some iron ore and place it. It's going to be a little silly, but boom, 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 boom. All right, so I'm just caving, right? Run across some iron. All right, that's great. So I mine it, pick it up, and, well, I actually have some here, but that's fine. Let's just throw it on the ground and see what happens. Oh my goodness, where did it go? See, it's inside of this miner's backpack. It says one out of 15 slots. You can right click the backpack while you're holding it and it'll show you the inventory inside. Now, you don't even have to have it in your hotbar there. As long as you mine something and you have it anywhere in your inventory, it'll automatically pick it up. So if I mine these two, take a look. Seven, nice. See, it just automatically stores it. Now, there's some other cool stuff you can do. First of all, let's take that back out. And let's go ahead and um, we're going to place four of them down. So while you are holding the backpack, you can hold in shift and then right click. And that'll put a lock on it. Okay, so see how there's that lock there? Well, let's say I put the iron inside of my backpack, right? If I then mine more iron, while it's locked, it's not going to put anything else into the backpack. And this applies for any backpack, too. I'm just using the miner's one. So locking it's a good way if, you know, you have to withdraw something from, like, a barrel. Because, for instance, <laughs> here, watch what happens really quick. If I try to get some coal, oh, no, where is it? Well, I put it in the miner's backpack. So that's why locking it before you get some coal from like a barrel or something of yours is a good idea. Although I am going to need some coal. Looks like for some torches. Um, right, so there's another mode too. And actually there's two more. This one is the receiving mode. When it has that, that arrow there. And I think that's pretty much whenever you... Let's see, do I have anything in there? Let's drop it and then pick it up. So then it receives everything into the backpack. I think that's more or less the standard functionality, but I think there's something special you can do with it too. I'll have to double check. But I know receiving is really useful because it'll, I think even if it's just anywhere in your inventory, it picks it up. Or if it's in your hot bar, maybe it's any item in your hot bar. Let me just double check here. Um, all right, put that there. So let's just set one down just to, hmm. no, huh, I don't know. Um, but then the other useful one is, this is great for building. It's called resupply. And resupply basically means it will dump out anything in its bag automatically to anything on your hotbar. So if I had, um, this is really useful for like diggers and builders backpacks where if you have it in that resupply mode, let's say you're building with cobblestone and you have a ton of cobblestone in your backpack. Well, 
it will automatically then just keep resetting your cobblestone amount to 64 because it'll pull from your backpack as long as it's in that resupply mode. And it doesn't have to, this doesn't have to be in your hotbar, but the cobblestone has to be in your hotbar or whatever other item you're uh, making stuff with. So that's really cool with the backpack. Definitely an awesome thing if you're going on a caving adventure or even if you're just doing some building. I really like these backpacks. You can also have multiple backpacks in your inventory, too, just to store even more stuff. Anyway, I think I'm going to start my little caving thing. So there's a few different ways to do that. Um, I'm not ready just yet, but I'm going to just talk about, like, what you can do. You can either just dig semi-straight down, where, you know, you have a two-by-one, and then you bring ladders to get down. Now, that's great if you have a lot of wood. I unfortunately don't have a ton of wood, as you can see. I got a ton of trees around, but I just haven't gotten around to chopping them down. So I don't want to do that. Another way you can get down there pretty quick is just to do like a diagonal mining thing. And that works fairly well. I just want to make sure I'm somewhere around this area because if I go too far out, all of my coal that's cooking in the coke oven, it isn't going to be processing because I'm too far away. And I don't have one of these nifty things called a chunk loader or a spot loader or a world anchor that keep this area loaded regardless of where you are. Oh yeah, 19 cold coke, sweet. Um, so I want to kind of stay in this area while I'm doing some caving. And I want to get down to a lower level. So I think I'm just going to do that diagonal kind of thing. So I'm going to find somewhere to do that. Maybe that island over there. There was an island that looked kind of neat. We could just go over there. It's kind of to the east. So I'm going to get my inventory all ready, and uh, then I'm going to just dig down. And You know, you've probably seen that a million times, but I'll just show you the stuff that makes it interesting. All right, I'll see you in a sec. Oh, man, everyone. I tell you, you know what? I did something totally different than what I was planning. I was planning on just doing some branch mining and having that be relatively boring. Instead, I found this really sweet, giant cave system underneath my base and all around this area, right in that little island over there. So you know what? There was so much stuff um, to that. I'm actually going to make it just a separate episode because I think it'll just make it so much better. So what kind of stuff did I get? Oh, man, you're going to have to find out on the next episode of Maryland's Hermitcraft Feed the Beast Adventure. See you next time, cows. Mm. Oh, get over here. What are you?